blood flow restriction training for glutes. Take one. So blood flow restriction training or BFR, it's also called katsu training, has been very popular for the last decade. And I remember being skeptical just like everyone else, but there is so much research supporting BFR training. Once upon a time, I had a research review with my colleague Chris Beardsley and we were reviewing 50 articles per month, but I was going through around 100 sports science journals every single month, checking out all the articles that were published. And month after month, I would find evidence supporting blood flow restriction training. Now, I've followed the science along the way, but I always assumed it was just for muscles distal to the cuff. You know, if you wrap here, then it would be good for your biceps and triceps and maybe forearms. Or, you, or if you wrapped your upper legs, it would be good for your quads and hammies and maybe the calves. You're occluding the blood flow to those muscles and therefore they're gonna fatigue faster. But then I began to stumble across research supporting blood flow restriction training for muscles that were, that were not distal to the cuff. You know, there were uh, torso muscles, you know, the chest and the glutes. And I thought, well, how could this be? Well, my first assumption was to think, well, it must be something systemic, you know? When you, when you use BFR, you're doing things that maybe alters the hormonal milieu. Maybe this increases signals that ultimately end up increasing muscle protein synthesis all over the body. And then it occurred to me, well, maybe you're fatiguing the synergists. And so, you know, in the case of the glutes, maybe you're doing squats and you, you fatigue the quads so fast that then the glutes have to do more work. Same thing if you fatigue the hamstrings, then the glutes would have to do more work there too, assuming the movement was hip extension. You know, the research on pre-exhaustion showed that when you do like flies or pec deck before you do bench press, pec activation during the bench press actually goes down. What goes up is your front delt and tricep activation. So there's another plausible explanation through by which blood flow restriction training would work. There's in fact a review paper published by Huang and Willoughby in JSCR from 2017, and they speculate to what the mechanisms of blood flow restriction could be with regards to hypertrophy. Okay, you've got secreted hormonal responses like testosterone, IGF-1, and growth hormone. You've got translation initiation via intracellular signaling responses like mTOR and P70S6K. You've got metabolite accumulations like lactate. You've got fiber type recruitment patterns. You have satellite cell activity. And finally, you have muscle cellular swelling. So the first possible mechanism, that's easy to understand. That's just saying when you do BFR training, you ramp up your production of testosterone and growth hormone IGF-1. The second proposed mechanism is more confusing, and that has to do with the intracellular signaling responses. The third, metabolite accumulations, that's the burn, you know, the burn that you feel, that metabolic stress that you get. Okay, the next one, the fiber type recruitment patterns, here you end up fatiguing so much faster, so you're gonna recruit way more motor units to compensate for the fatigue. Satellite cell activity, this is like muscle stem cells that lay outside the muscle cell, and when called upon, they will actually lend their nuclei into the muscle and you end up with more nuclei. Therefore, you have more messengers to call upon the cell to increase protein synthesis. And finally, cell swelling, that's the pump. And that may work by producing outward pressure onto the cell and then the cell perceives it as a threat and ramps up protein synthesis. So there you have six potential mechanisms. So here's the deal. All of these mechanisms are the same mechanisms through by which heavy resistance training works. So it's like, yes, when you perform blood flow restriction training, it works. It's going to build muscle. But what if you're already lifting heavy weights? Is it going to do anything that heavy weight training won't? That's the question we need to answer. But that alone wouldn't mean that blood flow restriction training isn't valuable. You know, there's a lot we don't know. And the one main positive of BFR training is that you can use light loads and get good results. You know, imagine taking something that you can do for around 30 reps, you know, and you get 30 reps and then you rest like 30 seconds and you do 15 more, then you rest another 30 seconds, you do 15 more and you're done. Well, the joints aren't gonna get nearly as beat up. And if that packs a powerful punch, then that can prolong your training career. So there are two scenarios where this would be valuable. Number one is whenever something's beat up, something's not feeling good, your shoulder, some, something's not feeling good, a muscle, well, you can still do BFR and use lighter loads, maybe preserve the muscle there while that nagging issue heals up. And the other is for healthy people, maybe we should be alternating. Maybe we train certain muscles heavy and other muscles lighter with BFR and then we flip flop. So you could have some sort of periodized schedule where you're taking advantage of the hypertrophy stimulus issued by BFR training while unloading certain joints and structures while you focus on others. 
I hope that made sense. <laughs> so let's get back to how blood flow restriction training might help other muscles grow. If I occlude my quads and hammies, how are my glutes going to grow? Well, one study showed that BFR training with the leg muscles led to greater results with the upper body muscles as long as you did light training for the upper body. If you did no training for the upper body, there were no improvements. But if you did light training for the upper body, it showed better results. Another study involved restricting the arm muscles while doing bench press twice a day with 30% of one rep max, which is very, very light, but doing around four sets of 15 to 20 reps. And the chest muscles grew in the blood flow restriction group, but in the group that didn't restrict their arms, the chest didn't grow. So BFR caused the chest muscles to grow larger. Another study looked at walking and squatting with blood flow restriction training, obviously with the legs restricted. Now the walking group did not grow their glutes, but the squatting group did, and they only used 20% of one rep max which is very light, but they did it twice a day for two weeks. Now, here's another review paper by Abe and colleagues, and I just want to read you the conclusion. They said low intensity of 20 to 30% of one rep max resistance exercise training combined with BFR elicits muscle hypertrophy in, the, in both blood flow restricted limb and non-blood flow restricted muscles. Then they go on to say, muscle activation is an important factor for BFR training induced muscle hypertrophy, and the minimum exercise intensity for muscle hypertrophy may be around 10% of MVIC for the blood flow restricted limb muscles, and about 20% of MVIC for non-restricted trunk muscles. So that's crazy, 10 to 20% of maximum is nothing. But it does appear that for the trunk muscles, in order for them to grow, you need a little bit heavier stimulus than for the restricted muscles downstream. Here's another study looking at blood flow restriction training with walking and the glutes did not grow as well. So just walking with cuffs on won't help the glutes grow. Another study had subjects for two weeks do leg extensions with 20% of one rep max and leg press with 30% of one RM two days per week for 12 weeks. Now the group that didn't restrict their blood flow, their glutes didn't grow, but the group that did grew their glutes. Now it wasn't to some great degree, it was only 4.4%, but the leg press isn't the best glute exercise. So, so there's another study supporting BFR for glute training. Now another study used kind of a similar design. The subjects trained twice a week for 12 weeks, but they did band squats and band leg extensions, kind of weird and the glutes didn't grow even in the BFR group. Now another study had subjects squat and leg curl twice a day for two weeks. One group wore cuffs, the other group didn't. And the group that wore cuffs grew their glutes to a much larger extent than the group that didn't. 9.1% versus negative 0.6% for the non-restricted group. And the loads in that study was only 20% of 1RM. So again, light loads help grow the glutes. So that sums up the research on BFR and glute training. And as you can see, there are no studies looking at heavy resistance training for the glutes versus heavy training and BFR, or heavy training for the glutes versus BFR. So if you're the type of lifter that doesn't like to lift, you hate lifting, you just wanna use light loads and not train that hard, BFR would absolutely work for you, especially in the restricted muscles, but maybe even in the non-restricted muscles too, like the trunk muscles. But most people watching this video are serious lifters. And right now there's not much evidence to suggest that BFR training would be additive to a pre-existing high quality glute training program. For example, what I outlined in my rule of thirds video. Like if you're doing a training program from Brett Contreras, would it be even better to add in BFR training? I don't know, I personally don't think so, but I'm open-minded. So in addition to not having much research to go by, we don't even know what exercise they'd work best with. And the reason why we can't even speculate about that is because we don't even know how it works. As I mentioned earlier, the main theory is that it just fatigues the muscle so it drives up muscle activation to compensate for the fatigue. So say you have cuffs up here and you're doing curls, because you have restricted blood flow to the arms, you're gonna get high levels of muscle activation sooner than if they weren't occluded. Now maybe if you're doing a compound movement, like say a chin up, you know, maybe your, your biceps would fatigue faster so your lats would end up working harder. And that's one way how the glutes might benefit because say you're doing squats or lunges, and the quads fatigue so fast, then the glutes end up having to do more. But I'm skeptical about that. So let's break this down from a practical perspective. All right, if that's the way it works, then yes, squats and lunges would work. Back extensions would be a good exercise too because your hamstrings would fatigue faster and now the glutes have to do more. What about abduction? The quads and hamstrings aren't synergists for abduction, so theoretically wearing the cuffs wouldn't help you grow bigger glutes by wearing the cuffs. You know, what about glute bridges and hip thrusts? Yes, you'll feel the quads and hamstrings working hard when you're going super heavy, but BFR is used pretty much exclusively with lighter loads, so would it matter? Would 
Would fatiguing the quads and hamstrings in a hip thrust lead to greater glute activation? And would the glutes have to compensate for the fatigued leg muscles? I don't think so. But anecdotally, my clients who have worn the cuffs do feel like they get a much greater pump, even when it's with things like hip thrust and abduction. They think they get a greater pump in the glutes, but that's just subjective feedback. That's not very scientific. We're not measuring the pump through ultrasound or something like that. But I think one of the main mechanisms through by which BFR could be valuable for glute training is psychological in nature. And you guys are gonna laugh and think this is stupid, but there is so much research on the placebo effect, on the effect of like self-confidence, and things like self-confidence can actually affect your results. So you might be wondering, what the heck is he talking about? All right, there used to be this wrestler back in the day named the Ultimate Warrior. Now this guy was absolutely crazy, but as you can see in the picture, he always tied off his arm muscles and it made him look pretty badass. His arms would be so pumped. So I noticed when women wear those BFR cuffs, it makes their butts stick out more. It kind of perks the glutes up, it makes them rounder, it makes them stick out more. I think it would make women feel more confident. You know, they'd be strutting their stuff, walking tall. They'd be happy to be in the gym because they'd glance at themselves in the mirror and they'd be like, wow, I look good. It's the same as when I wear the cuffs and my muscles get so pumped, you know, like my biceps and triceps or my quads and hammies, I like the way I look. So that could be a third mechanism through by which it works all up in there. So I'd like to leave you with some practical recommendations, but again, we don't have much to go by. I personally don't think that they're gonna help much if you're already doing booty by Brett, for example. Every base is already covered. Every mechanism is already covered when you train under a system like booty by Brett. But it can't hurt to try. BFR is very safe, and it's especially wise to try this if you've got some nagging joint or say you have knee pain or something and you wanna train around it, then go light for super super high reps, and then the knee would heal quicker and it would prevent atrophy. It would be logical to think, oh, I should wear it during my warmups because my warmups are light loads anyway. You know, during my glute activation, why not wear the cuffs? But then you run the risk of fatiguing yourself for the big lifts, your heavy compound movements, which you should be using progressive overload with. So it could decrease your results in that fashion by preventing you from setting PRs on your big lifts. So maybe instead you do burnouts at the end of the workout, after you've gotten all the big rocks out of the way, you went for PRs, you hit a big lift like squats or hip thrusts or lunges or Romanian deadlifts. You got those out of the way and now you put the BFR cuffs on and maybe you do a high rep circuit of body weight movements. Hell, maybe even combine the glute loop with it. Now the exercises that make the most sense would be squat and lunge type movements, hinging movements, as for bridging and thrusting movements and abduction movements, I don't know. I don't think it can harm you. It's just that in time, when we learn the mechanisms better, we might come to find that it only works with certain exercises and not others. Specifically, exercises that utilize the quads or the hammies, which therefore cause the glutes to do more. Now, luckily I have my client, Brianna Alexander here, to demonstrate all of these exercises here in Glute Lab Las Vegas and I had her roll through a bunch of different types of exercises. And by the way, she got a huge pump with them. Yeah, here's Bree's butt after doing around 10 minutes of BFR training. As you can see, it looks pretty pumped up and the cuffs are making it appear even larger. You know, she loved them. So it's important to know that when you do BFR training, it's not gonna work as well with heavy, heavy weights. You know, you don't wanna be doing, you know, 315 pound hip thrusts, unless you're my client Carly who can bust that out for 30 reps. The most popular protocol involves taking 30% of one rep max, busting out for like 30 reps, and then doing two sets of 15 reps following that with only like 30 seconds to a minute rest. But you can experiment. That's just the one they use the most in the research. Main things stick to high reps. Body weight, light dumbbell, light loading, bands. Those all work great with BFR training. Again, I would not use BFR training with your heavy compounds. I'd slap the cuffs on towards the end of the workout and do a burnout, do some circuit training, do some glute circuits. So I hope you like this scientific analysis. The company selling the BFR bands, they quote stuff on BFR training, but it's for other muscles. They'll quote studies looking at quad hypertrophy, which makes more sense because it's occluded. And in my opinion, the, the company selling these bands, they tend to overhype BFR training obviously because they're trying to make a profit, but they don't seem to understand the science that well. They're marketers, not scientists. It's important to re-emphasize here, we don't have anything to go by really. We've got clues. So I picture the manufacturer of one of these products reaching out to some nerdy scientist in a lab, paying them off to say something like, you know, these are gonna do this and this and this, and they kind of use research on other muscles to overhype BFR glute training and he's full of crap because he doesn't know if that really works on the glutes that way. You know, I also picture some big meathead bodybuilder saying, 
you want big glutes, just squat or just do this and ignore all that stupid crap. And he's wrong as well. Nobody knows right now. We don't have enough evidence. It's all conjecture at this point. And I think I'm in the best position to make the conjecture because I've spent my life in a gym and I got my PhD and know how to interpret the evidence. So it's anyone's best guess now. So in conclusion, I don't know of many bodybuilders who use these cuffs. That's not to say that it still isn't useful. Those bodybuilders might be missing out, but I surmise that it's not gonna be beneficial when you're already lifting heavy and going for PRs. But if you like these bands or they make you want to exercise more or go to the gym because you love the way they make your butt look have at it but slap them on after the heavy compounds have been done make sure to do high reps with short rest periods with them and stick to exercises where you're going to fatigue the synergists all right please hit like please give it a thumbs up make sure you're following me i got a lot more to come in 2021 thank you for watching if you like what you saw in this video and you want to train under my system and principles then I invite you to click on the link below and subscribe to Booty by Brett and join the thousands of other happy members who are seeing amazing results.